So I think uh, we can start now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So Zdravo Zvima, everybody. <laughs> Good Bravo. to see you. Good to see you. Uh, my name is Mizami. I'm from Singapore, and today I'm going to share you with you guys uh, live streaming 101 on Twitch. So Twitch is actually a platform for live streaming. Uh, most of the time it's for gaming, but uh, now there's actually a growing community of artists and creatives who have actually made their uh, made Twitch their home for live streaming their content. So today I'm just going to share a little bit of uh, how to get started and uh, hopefully you guys will be able to learn something and try out something and join me on Twitch and then we can all you know have a very nice time together live streaming on anything to do with photography. All right. So you can see in the screenshot right now, um, that's how I look like right now as, as well. It's the same camera because the camera is actually from over here. So I have actually set up two cameras side by side. One is for my main cam, the other one's for my um, interview cam. So this is basically what you see whenever you watch my live stream on Twitch, all right? Okay, so today we're going to cover a few things. Um, hopefully, it will not be too boring. <laughs> so I'll be introducing a little bit about the Mizami, which is my own company based in Singapore. Uh, and then I'm going to address uh, the one fundamental problem that everyone is facing globally right now, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. And, you know, for photographers, most of us are photographers by trade, uh, by profession. Because of COVID-19, we don't have our work. Uh, for myself, my classes, workshops, photo shoots, um, whether it's corporate work or personal work, it's all cancelled or postponed because of the pandemic. Um, and then after that, for us as photographers, we have some equipment lying around. So why not we do something with it? So this is where live streaming comes in. And then I'm going to share a little bit of, of uh, where you can live stream, you know, uh, apart from Twitch as well. Um, I, I also share how to live stream. And I think this is very important because a lot of people they are interested to do live streaming, but they do not know how to start live streaming. So I'm going to cover things like software, hardware, and even some settings, and hopefully everything will be fine, and I'll be able to show everyone everything, okay? And of course, the most important thing is when you do live streaming, you definitely want to make money out of it. So this is one of the tips I'm, uh, or a section where I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how to monetize your live stream and hopefully can turn into... Uh, turn it into a viable uh, uh, income, all right? Viable passive income. It's not going to make you a millionaire overnight, although that's fantastic, but uh, hopefully some of these ideas will help you, you know, to generate some sort of income because as photographers, during these crazy times during the pandemic, we may not be able to go out and shoot. Um, we may not be able to meet clients or shoot in a studio and we'll not be able to, you know, uh, earn a living. But at least, you know, through live streaming, perhaps we have uh, uh, other ways of uh, earning money, all right? And of course, I'll provide some other tips and tricks as well as suggestions on how to go about with live streaming. Uh, then after that, we have a Q&A session. And after that, we wrap up for the evening or in your case, the afternoon. Because right now, it's actually 6 p.m. in Singapore. For you guys, I think it's 12 noon, just uh, getting ready for lunch. All right. So uh, introduction on myself. Okay, I'm actually based in Singapore. All right. Um, I specialize in bespoke photography projects such as conceptual pre-weddings as well as personal corporate and uh, marketing purpose for uh, marketing aligned photography shoots. So sometimes I do product shoots as well. Uh, I do plenty of commercial work these days uh, from product shoots to portraits to corporate. Um, those pre wedding shoots, those were those are coming out to be uh, becoming more rare these days. Okay, so most of the time, like what they say, the money is in commercial work. So that's that. All right. Um, I began my career as a professional photographer in 2016. That was just about four years ago. But uh, I actually started playing with a camera in 2003. Uh, that was with a Nikon FM2. So I think I have it here. It's inside my dry box. Let me just fetch it. This is my old Nikon FM2. You can still see it still works. The sound is so nice. Yeah, but uh, you don't have to worry about SD cards for this one. There's no megapixel. <laughs> it's just film camera. Um, and this was back in 2003 and I was just doing this for fun. But in 2015, uh, I went for Benjamin Von Wong's workshop and that truly changed my life because I was um, inspired to do more with photography and somehow things just became more uh, interesting with photography and I just evolved along as well and now I've turned into a, a you know, doing it as a career. So my my life as a commercial photographer just started four years ago, to be honest, all right? 
Um, I was a former school teacher, so I teach a lot in schools, uh, teaching primary school kids, uh, English, math, and art. Um, I'm very passionate about lifelong learning. That's why when Marco invited me to share this uh, live streaming one-on-one uh, seminar with you guys, I am more than happy to do so. All right, This is uh, part and parcel of what I love to do. I love teaching. Uh, apart from uh, teaching um, photography as well, uh, sorry, apart from teaching live streaming classes, uh, I also do photography classes, workshops classes uh, through uh, the Art Museum in Canary, which is something that I started um, that allows me to work with different brands and organizations around the region. So I travel quite a fair bit around Southeast Asia, running workshops and classes on uh, fundamentals of lighting in photography and Capture One. You're teaching people how to use Capture One. Um, so the Amazing Live Show, which is my live streaming photography talk show, actually started this year, March 2020. So it's still quite new. Um, so <laughs> a lot of people thought that I've been doing this for quite some time. But the thing, the thing is, um, because of the pandemic, a lot of people all around the world decide to like start doing online stuff even more, like live streaming, Zoom calls, Zoom conferences, uh, Zoom webinars. Uh, we even have people on Microsoft Teams or Skype, you know, doing all sorts of online interaction because we just can't meet people in real life. So one of the ideas behind this is really to uh, bring people together through my live stream and hopefully be able to teach other people, you know, the, the normal stuff that I've been doing in real life, just that is transferred over into the realm of online connectivity. So instead of just uh, sitting around at home watching Netflix and doing nothing, I decided to like start the amazing live show and uh, this is aimed at photographers and I always bring a lot of guest speakers as well to share their thoughts and uh, you know knowledge on photography or even share their aspirations and uh, their own history and origin story with um, an audience, right? So sometimes I also run online workshops and uh, webinars and tutorials on this platform as well. Uh, most of the time these days, I do interviews with various uh, other photographers from all around the world. Uh, so it's quite interesting. I had uh, some of the, the guest speakers on my show are uh, actually guest speakers for Photorama. So you'll be able to see people like Dennis Dunbar, uh, Ray Robin. They're all part of my show a few episodes ago as well. So it is going to be really fun. Um, I'm also ambassador for certain brands like Azo for Southeast Asia, Omnidesk Pro and uh, Wacom for Singapore. Uh, I also work for Capture One for the Asia Pacific region as a reseller manager. So I work with the partners all around this region as well. Uh, for Singapore side, I'm also a committee member with the Professional, uh, sorry, Professional Photographers Association of Singapore, better known as PPS. So as part of the PPS activities, I'm also in charge of doing some uh, co-events. So instead of having the ability to do events in real life, again, most of our events now are done online. And that's where I really had to learn and experiment with a lot of live streaming procedures. So um, for you guys who are, uh, are here today, um, I'm happy to share whatever I know through, the, uh, through this webinar to, about uh, live streaming. Uh, but when I first started out, <laughs> there was no one to teach me. I was like really trying everything. So today, it's just a promise that whatever you're going to be learning today, is to ensure that you're able to start your own live streaming channel without the problems that I face. Okay, it's a very, very difficult problem, uh, a very expensive one as well because there are a lot of things I tried that did not work. Um, so hopefully today's presentation is able to help you avoid those situations. Okay. And uh, I'm also a phase one certified professional, so I do work as a digital tech from time to time. Okay, so I'm just going to play a quick trailer uh, that basically is played during every single episode of the live stream. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. So basically that trailer is played every single time I come online uh, on the live stream. It's part of the branding. Uh, so the idea is to create an impact every single time I come on the stream. So the live stream, you know, I could just appear on, on the screen like a magic show, just one camera and then you see my face. But I decided to like turn it into something else altogether. So one of the key things about uh, live streaming is of course creating branding and uh, this is something we're going to talk about later as well. So due to the COVID-19 pandemic, what can photographers such as yourself do? Uh, the big question is, what can photographers do with the equipment that they have right now? 
So a lot of people out there these days probably have a mirrorless camera or maybe even a camera phone or even a, a camera that's capable of uh, video edit, uh, video recording. Like uh, DSLRs these days, they do have uh, hybrid functions that allow you to do video recording. So some of us, um, you know, are facing this sad reality where we have jobs which are cancelled. We do not have our uh, projects. Everything's postponed indefinitely. We're not sure when's the next time we're actually going to start shooting again. And as a result, we do not have the ability to draw an income. And of course, you know, there are other concerns like uh, health and safety because the pandemic is still ongoing. There are countries with second waves. Um, there are cases whereby people are asymptomatic. We do not know whether they carry the virus. Um, and when we interact with them, somehow we might be infected. And this can be a problem because, you know, sometimes we live with families and it can affect others as well. So a lot of photographers in Singapore, for example, uh, are avoiding going out for photo shoots because they do not want to be infected. Um, Singapore right now, the cases, the number of cases has a kind of, I wouldn't say flatten the curve yet, but we are still facing a, 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 big, a big number. Um, but within the community, the, the, the numbers are a little bit more controlled and stable as opposed to a few months ago. So the big question is again, what can we do uh, instead of just sitting around doing nothing and watching Netflix, right? So uh, first of all, you need to have a vision. Okay, you need to understand what you want to do. Do you want to have a live stream that is educational? Because again, like I said previously, on Twitch, there are so many ways of uh, going online and uh, sharing some of your streams. Uh, you can be a gamer, you can talk about art, you can talk about uh, you know, doing creative uh, craft. You can literally just come on to the stream and just talk to people. You don't even have to show them anything. You can just talk to them as well because there is a category called just chatting. Literally just chatting. Just people coming in and just talk. Um, but you need to have an idea why do you want to stream first because otherwise it's going to be you know, like a complete waste of time. You just come on stream and then you don't know what's going on. And one of the biggest problems with streaming when you first start, you may not have an audience. And if there's no identity tag to your branding, um, and there's no vision for your live stream channel, then most probably this endeavor, this project of yours may not take off at all, all right? So um, I'll just categorize very quickly for educational, some of the things that uh, I've seen and experienced as well as have done on my own uh, Twitch channel. Uh, we can do online webinars where we share uh, talks on photography, talks on different genres of photography, talks on uh, how to you know work with lighting, for example. But all these are just you know presentations like like what we have right now. It's just you know slides and people talking. So this is still possible even on Twitch, right? Uh, you can also do tutorials. So you actually go in and teach people how to edit Photoshop, uh, edit on Capture One or Lightroom, or you can even uh, share with people how you do um, maybe. Uh, painting, you know, if you are into creative work other than photography, there's a lot of things that you can try out as well. Uh, in fact, there is also a growing trend of Twitch streamers teaching people how to sing. So the, the, the idea of Twitch being a live stream platform has expanded beyond just photography and games. It has gone into other streams of art. So if you are capable of doing singing, if you're capable of singing songs and want to teach people that as well, you can do that as well, right? And of course, you can have online workshops, but this is uh, a little bit more complicated because uh, to show people how to do things, you may need to invest in additional gear, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, for myself, I do online workshops, so I actually have set up one, two, uh, three, and four cameras, uh, which I can change and swap during the stream so that people can see different angles within this home studio. So people can see how I set up my camera, how I set up my lighting, how I set up the subject, you know, normally I do toy photography or product photography, or sometimes I invite a model here to just uh, uh, be the subject. And we just do a shoot so people can see how it's done uh, through the stream, right? And of course, you know, because it's live, when you do live editing and retouching, you can explain to people what you're doing. People are able to learn. And being a live streaming platform, you know, they have the ability to chat. They can ask questions, you know, and then you can actually answer them in real life. So this actually creates some kind of um, a synergy between the audience and the presenter. And it's just like being in a classroom altogether, all right? So the, the, the idea of communication for education is very, very much real. You are able to teach in real time and people are able to listen and learn at the same time as well. 
And um, you know how how often we seen videos online on YouTube where people teach uh, others how to do live editing and do retouching and things like that. Uh, now with live streaming, it's all real time, so people can explain as they go along. And people who don't understand, they can ask for repetitions. They can ask for uh, a, a better or clearer explanation. So all these are possible. So again, it falls down to education, being able to teach other people at a live setting, right? So community building is something very important. Uh, like I said before, there's just chatting. You can just chat with people. There's categories for ask me anything. So you can actually come online and, and talk and uh, people listen. And if you have any questions, you can ask anything to do with whatever topic you have on hand. So community building is something that's very important for all forms of social media if you want to have a following. Um, but you must remember that at the end of the day, it needs to be relevant to your vision. Okay, you cannot deviate too much from your vision. Um, otherwise, you know, you, you'll be just doing something for the sake of doing it, right? You have to have a, a, an idea and that idea has to grow into something else altogether. So even if you do ask me anything, just to make sure you, you build the correct kind of community, keep your topics relevant to your idea, your big idea, which is if you want to do photography, then stick to ask me anything about photography, you know? So don't go and ask me anything about cooking. It doesn't make sense. Um, although that being said, there are also Twitch channels dedicated to teaching you how to cook as well. So if you're interested, you can learn cooking online from there as well. Um, sometimes, you know, you just want to chill out and share the community. So this is something that's, uh, you know, very casual. Um, a lot of uh, hobbyists, photographers come online and they do all these kind of chilling out sessions as well. So these are some of the things that you can come up with um, in terms of uh, generating the, the, or rather building the community for your live stream. But business, how can we actually make this a business? How can we actually monetize the platform? So these are some of the things that you also will have as key considerations as you go along. Um, and for me, for the Amazing Life show, um, where I do a photography talk show, um, it's actually a combination of everything that you see here on the left. It's educational. I am building a community. I, it's also a business transaction because I do have a, a platform for people to, uh, you know, give tips and donations. I also reach out to brands. I also reach out to different companies and organizations to see how we can work together. And all this is part and parcel of making your live stream even more lively, right? So these are just some strategies that you can look into to create more um, impact with your live stream. So where do you live stream? There are a few, uh, few platforms these days that make uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, impactful discovery more um, available okay so let's say for example if you are if you're on twitch of course you know that that in itself is a platform that is self-discovery there's a recommended channel and things like that but everybody these days have a facebook account okay um, facebook does have uh, this thing called facebook live so you can actually live stream on facebook as well um, right now, there's also subcategories for Facebook Live. There's this thing called um, content creator and there's also gaming level up. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do content creation for, let's say, a photography channel on Facebook, you can do so as well. Or if you want to be a gamer, you can actually just play games and show people how you're playing games and you know things like that on the level up platform. Um, Twitter also has got a live streaming platform called Periscope. Um, quite popular with uh, people who, who, you know, already have a Twitter presence. Uh, Instagram, just like uh, Facebook Live, there's uh, Instagram Live. So you can actually do Instagram Live to, to um, you know, talk to your audience, talk to your followers. Uh, you can even do short interviews with uh, another participant. Okay, so Instagram Live is also quite popular. Um, but to be honest, um, it's not ideal because Instagram Live does have a one hour cut off time. Yeah, so that's why, that's why I don't really use IG Live. Uh, after one hour, it just cuts. That's, that's not really good for live streaming. Um, and of course, you know, some people, they prefer to do it in private. They do not want people outside to see their live stream. So we have something like this. This is a Zoom. Technically, it's a live stream because I'm doing a live uh, sharing session with you guys. You can only join with a password. Uh, without a password, you will not be able to participate. And this can uh, allow you to have uh, more intimate and private discussions on certain things, like maybe a business talk or something like that. Um, 
There's also Discord. Discord is, of course, um, primarily a communication uh, application, but uh, there are ways to actually stream through Discord as well. So these two ways, uh, Discord and Zoom, are more of like a private session. Okay, You can uh, implement passwords and you can prevent outsiders from joining in. Other avenues of streaming that I did not put here would include things like Skype, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Teams, and Google Hangouts. They are kind of like live streaming as well, seemingly, uh, seemingly in the same category as the private for Discord and Zoom, but um, it's more like a, like a conference call kind of thing. Okay? The difference for Zoom compared to the rest, I feel, is because Zoom actually has got an option if you are willing to pay for it, uh, to go into webinar mode where it can actually allow you to have or host more people, uh, I think up to 1,000 participants. So this is uh, another way you can reach out for, for events, uh, live streaming. But for me personally, I prefer Twitch. Why? Because first of all, there's community building uh, by way of Teams. Teams is actually... Um, okay, to, 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 to help you understand what Teams is about, basically if person who is using Twitch for a long time and has a consistent following and a consistent uh, um, uh, scheduled streams, what will happen is that he might be approached to become a partner. So as a Twitch partner, he can actually start a team. Now teams can vary from, from different uh, uh, communities, but uh, for the team that I'm, I'm a part of these days, uh, I'm actually part of the photography team in Twitch. So what he can do, uh, he basically can invite other people to join the team. So this actually creates a community of um, like-minded individuals who are streaming photography channels, who are streaming photography content, um, and they all can discover each other better. And this is how you can actually basically make friends and uh, support each other. And of course, you know, if people enjoy your stream, they'll have a word of mouth marketing going on. They can tell other people, oh, you know what? I enjoy so-and-so stream. Uh, let's watch it together. And this actually can help build your following as well, especially if you have content that is interesting, right? Um, there's also the path to partnership program as well as the affiliate program. These two are basically ways where you can monetize the, uh, your live streaming. So for affiliate program, it's easier to achieve. All you need to do is have 50 followers and stream for a few uh, separate number of days. And then you have to have three consistent average viewers on your live stream during that period, during that period of 30 days, I think. So affiliates actually can receive money and incentives um, when people donate to them directly through the, the bits on uh, Twitch. They call it bits. Right? Bits are like pretty much like currency. It's like dollars and cents. Uh, it's just called bits to avoid I think taxation issues, I guess, but uh, it's it's a way for people to show support for their favorite live streamers. So if they enjoy the content, they can share with bits, and then people can earn money from there. Um, of course, again, it's not an overnight thing where you can suddenly become a millionaire, uh, but uh, it is a way of actually earning a, a few dollars here and there. And if you build a community, you build a following, you have more people joining and following your your streams. Um, don't be surprised if one day you can turn it into a full-time uh, job. Yeah? Because uh, there are some people out there, I think you've heard of them, they are professional live streamers. Uh, most of them are gamers, of course, and they are earning a lot a month. You know, it, it's crazy. Some of them are earning like five-figure sums or even more. Um, so these are, these are some of the pipe dreams that a lot of people come into Twitch or even started live streaming for. They go like, oh, you know what? This is a good way to earn money. Well, I'm here to give you the reality. It's not that easy, okay? But uh, it is something that you can work towards. Even for myself, it is something I'm working towards as well. But there are other ways to earn uh, money, all right? So um, these are some of the things that I'll cover later on. But uh, this is something that I hope you guys remember, okay? The reality is far different from the dream. It's not easy to make money on live streaming, but it is possible, okay? Um, I also prefer to use Twitch because it allows me to have high resolution streaming. Um, I've done a lot of tests for Facebook. You can, uh, unless you're a partner um, or verified account with a, a high following, it's not very easy to get at least 1080p for your live stream. Okay, for Facebook, it's always kept at 720p. Um, and that means that wherever you're presenting, you know, it's not going to be sharp. It's not going to be clear. It's going to be a little bit fixated, especially for people who are watching on big screens. Um, for Twitch, you can go up to 1440p based on what I've tried so far. I think um, this is the max, okay, 1440p. 
Um, but otherwise, it always averages around 1080p. So if you want HD quality live streaming, then you may want to consider Twitch, all right? And there's also integration with Discord. So Discord uh, is an app which I'm going to share real quickly. Okay, I'm just going to open up my own Discord so you have an idea what it is. Okay, so right now I am loading Discord. Okay, so Discord is basically an app and uh, what it does is that you have multiple communities on the left over here. So this is a Twitch photography stream. <laughs> you can see a lot of uh, stuff being shared. Um, people, you know, chatting with one another. It's a community. It's quite funny. Sometimes they have a lot of funny banter. Um, and of course, you know, we also have people who share their own streams here and then people just follow each other and watch each other's stream and learn from one another. Um, and occasionally, you also have uh, things like this, you know, compositing channels so you can see what people are working on. Um, and you can see varying skill sets. You know, some people are professional, some people are just starting out. Um, there's also like critique section over here and people sharing raw files and people can edit and stuff like that. So all these people who actually started out on Twitch uh, have congregated over here in the Discord channel as part of this community. Uh, and, and it can be a very lively bunch sometimes and then people will just, you know, uh, experience a little bit of uh, camaraderie, if you, if you know what I mean. So people actually are able to uh, share thoughts and knowledge and even their works and then learn from one another. So this is one of the things that makes um, Twitch uh, community a lot more exciting. Facebook, on the other hand, I, I, I don't understand. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very, very complicated sometimes. Um, you guys probably may have encountered this, but Facebook, a lot of very funny individuals because, you know, behind the cloak of anonymity, people can make toxic remarks or, or, or criticism that is not very helpful. So for, for some strange reason, I think because Discord has got moderators, a lot of administrators who are responsible, provided they are responsible people. Um, most of the things that go on within those channels are curated and people generally have uh, you know, mutual respect for each other. So it's, it's a lot better. I feel the community is a lot more uh, wholesome. Okay. So this is something you can consider as well when you go on Twitch. Of course, you know, sometimes uh, you do not have to have a Twitch account to actually participate in Discord channels, but uh, it's always encouraged to, to, to be part of this community and have your own live streaming platform on Twitch as well. Okay. So how to live stream. Okay. So the basic hardware that you need, these are the, the, the cheapest things that you can think of, but categorically, I will just share with you the, the, the items. I'm not going to share the brand um, because it's, it, there's just so many out there. Uh, maybe I'll just drop a hint, one or two brands that can work for you guys um, depending on your budget. Okay, so I have categorized um, into three parts on uh, the hardware that you need, but basically, if you are to start streaming, you will definitely need a webcam so that people can see you, all right? So a webcam these days, um, you can get one from, uh, uh, you know, for example, I use a Razer Kio uh, that can go up to 720p at 60 frames per second. So it's not so bad. Uh, some people also will insist on getting 4K webcams, but to be honest, it's not worth it because at the end of the day, uh, when you post your stream out, it's not going to be in 4K, all right? Uh, maybe at the most, because of downscaling sampling, it can be a little bit better. But webcams being the webcams, the sensors are quite small. At the end of the day, it's, it's still webcam, all right? So don't, don't, don't buy too much into the hype of webcams. If you want to be serious about uh, image quality, then you need to go something higher level. But that being said, if you just want to start uh, live streaming, you just want to keep things simple, just have a simple webcam, uh, minimum 720p with 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second lowest, um, that's fine, all right? And a microphone. Microphone, uh, it's always good to have a decent microphone, uh, something that's able to pick up your voice. Uh, you can use headsets like this, you know, a, a cheap diff, uh, headset works as well. But, you know, for some people, they prefer to go for microphones like this, okay, uh, USB microphones. Um, try to avoid those two you know, those really cheap microphones because sometimes the audio is just really bad. Um, and the thing about live streaming is that you must remember this. It's a visual and oral experience. People are able to see you. People are able to listen to you. And if you listen to someone and they sound very bad, chances are you do not want to stay and listen to them anymore. Um, can you imagine if you are watching a live stream and then the person is like crackling, you know, the voice like, and then you go pop, pop, pop. You, you, you see all these interruptions and then you can hear the voices like a robot. It's not really nice. You, you need to 
to have a very pleasant time to listen to someone. It's just like watching TV. You you enjoy it if someone is on the TV and the newscaster speaks in a very relaxed tone and the voice is just rich and bassy and you know just overall pleasant to hear. But can you imagine if the person is like, you know, distortion everywhere and there's a lot of weird hissing sound, uh, it may actually turn away audience. All right, so this is not good. Um, Lighting is very important as well. Uh, just like photography, you always need to light yourself up so that people can see you clearly. Um, and the other thing is when you work with webcams, you must remember that webcams are digitally uh, controlled. That means the shutter speed, everything is all non-mechanical. They are all digitally controlled. And if it somehow detects insufficient light, it will try to overcompensate. So you will start to see, yeah, the screen gets brighter, but your frame rate will drop to maybe about 5 to 10 frames per second. It can be really bad. So having a decent light, uh, maybe a, a, a cheap Yongno light, it's good enough, uh, or a cheap Godox light is good enough, just to make sure that you can light up yourself. Uh, and of course, you know, you can invest in more light things as well, you know, to, to create your key light, your back light, and your field light. But uh, having one light is more than enough if you're just starting out. And of course, you know, just like uh, how I was sharing with Marco previously uh, before the show started, uh, having a decent internet connection is more than enough to do live streaming. Um, but if let's say you have issues with, uh, with your internet service provider, sometimes the internet connection is really bad, uh, you may want to consider, you know, either um, looking for a new service provider or getting a better router or even subscribing to a VPN so you can uh, connect to another server and have better connectivity. The thing is, for live streaming, you really need to have a good internet connection. If, let's say, you're live streaming to Twitch and your internet connection is very bad, you know, or, or there's a lot of drop packets and you see a lot of disconnects, um, people will not want to stay around. They will go like, oh, okay, within 10 seconds, I see two drops. The frame rate is you know, choppy. Um, it's not something I want to watch anymore. I'll just skip and go somewhere else. So this is very important as well. And of course, you know, um, you can live stream from your phone. Okay, like for example, Instagram, you can use your phone to just uh, do IG live. Um, but ideally, if you want to have absolute control for your live streaming, you need to have a desktop or, uh, or notebook or a laptop. Okay, so this is the basic needs, that, uh, basic things that you need to have in order to start live streaming. But... If you want to invest in a little bit more, then yes, you can get a HD webcam that allows you to have uh, at least uh, 1080p or 4K uh, resolution. Uh, get a high quality mic. Okay, for myself, I'm using a Blue Yeti. It's, it's decent enough. It's USB. Um, but it's good to actually have a boom stand or a boom mic. All right. Uh, sorry, boom arm. So you can actually hang your microphone. Now, why do I hang my microphone? Basically, if I were to talk to you guys right now and sometimes I touch my table if the microphone is on a desk sometimes it will pick up the tapping sound of the table and these kind of little subtle things can turn people off when they are live streaming um, so try to avoid it as well uh, you can go for more than one light this time uh, if you want to invest um, for myself I use aperture lights they are pretty good um, fast internet connection very important to use Ethernet cable now, a lot of people who use Wi-Fi or wireless connection to do live streaming, they will have latency issues. So from, um, from myself to Twitch server, there's a little bit of lag. And from Twitch to the audience, there'll be now lag. Right? So imagine if there's four seconds up and then four seconds down, that's eight seconds altogether of delay. So it may not be good uh, if you have too much delay in between. Um, people may not want to you know, continue watching. And again, a desktop computer or notebook as well. Now, if you want to go advanced, you want to level up your live streaming, okay, you may want to invest in a mirrorless camera or DSLR camera with uh, video capability. Um, and of course, you can get uh, Elgato Gaming Cam Link 4K, all right? Uh, like, say, for example, it's over here, okay? This is, this is what I use to connect my um, HDMI cable to the micro HDMI port in the uh, Sony cameras that I use. Um, if you want to spend quite a fair bit for, for top-notch quality, yes, you can get this one here. This one costs about $200 plus in Singapore, which translates about 150 USD, I think. Uh, this one here costs only a fraction of the price. This is the China version. This is a HDMI video capture. Very, very cheap. Costs about $6 US. So it's a very big difference, but it works as well. The only difference is that 
as with hardware encoding, um, the Camlink 4 k hardware encoding is a lot better. You can see the quality is mo so much better uh, compared to the China OEM one. Um, but that being said, if you're just starting out, maybe you do not want to spend too much. I mean, keep things cheaper and simple, then you can get the HDMI capture device, all right? So it also boils down to what you want to achieve for your live stream. Do you want to have just one camera or do you want to have more than one camera to show people more things? Um, so this is another consideration because if you notice, when you have one camera, you need to get at least one of these capture devices. Okay, so this is a capture device that allows you to translate whatever uh, is on the camera into live stream signal. So you can you know, play as a media source. But uh, with every new additional camera requirement will increase as well. Okay, you have uh, a need for another HDMI cable. You have a need for like, another capture card. So your, your spending will become higher and higher. So this is where it can be quite scary. Right? So you must have a clear idea of what you want to do. Otherwise, you'll be spending too much money on unnecessary things. Um, it's also good to have a high quality mic. Again, uh, a Blue Yeti is more than sufficient. Some people are looking into the Elgato Wave 3, which just came out because it is capable of uh, producing XLR quality video, uh, sorry, audio, uh, without having a, a mixer. So this is something that you can consider as well. And of course, it does cost quite a fair bit. Um, otherwise, you can actually get a, a cheap or decent audio mixer to uh, control your, your, your audio uh, as well. So some photographers, they do vlogging. You can actually use um, your HDMI to actually bring the audio signal. Uh, you can actually use a road mic, for example, to mount it on your camera to actually do your live streaming. So again, Depends on what you want to do, okay? Uh, you can also consider having a top-notch video quality by using uh, lights with modifiers. You can use soft boxes, you can use grids, you know, to control the lighting. And speaking of lighting, uh, one of the things that makes live streamers on Twitch generally uh, uh, pleasing to the eye is when they have nice backgrounds, you know, they have all this RGB colored lighting and things like that. Of course, my, my lights are not off. <laughs> I just get it off because I'm not live streaming right now. But uh, it, it does, you can see in the picture, it, it does create some kind of ambience. So you can generally create an atmosphere that makes your, your room more interesting, right? Especially if you have a room that is, you know, uh, otherwise quite boring. Or in my case, my room is quite messy. There's a lot of gear and stuff like that. So I use lighting to make things a little bit more exciting. Or I can just turn it off so nobody can see anything in the background, okay? And of course, um, at the end of the day, um, when you use mirrors, cameras with a good lens, you know, like a f1.4 bokeh would be beautiful. So everything else looks really smooth all around and it just looks generally pleasing to the eye. Um, having said that, I think as photographers, it will be good to actually have good image quality because you guys are streaming and you guys are prof uh, professional photographers by profession or even hobbyists by profession. Um, it's always good to show that you know a thing or two about photography in your live stream. So um, it does create a, a, a difference between being good and great. Um, you know, sometimes putting a webcam and some light is good enough, but how do you go and become great? So this is something you can consider as well. Um, for, for myself, I actually use quite a fair bit of gear. You can see there's a stream deck on the, on the picture. Uh, this stream deck actually allows me to control my scenes. So if you watch my live stream, you can see that sometimes I jump from uh, camera to camera. Sometimes I jump from profile shot to the Zoom call when I have my interviewee on another screen. Sometimes I jump to another uh, a trailer. So all these kind of things are easier to control when I have the stream deck. So this stream deck, there's... I mean, you, you don't have to buy all three. You can just buy one simple one. Uh, you know, the medium one is actually more than enough. Um, allows you to actually have a decent uh, uh, control over your scenes. Uh, the reason why is because when you use software for broadcasting like Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio, um, they do have um, this thing called scenes that separate different uh, visuals. So you can actually use this to program it uh, such that you can control uh, without using the mouse at all. It's a lot faster, it looks more pro professional, and the tendency to make mistakes are a lot less. And of course, you know, at the end of the day, you need a good desk. Like for myself, I use a OmniDesk Pro cable, uh, table. So it's a table that can go up and down, you know, uh, in case I, I am doing long streams. Because sometimes I do engage myself in streams that go 
that went up to, I think the longest one I had was about four hours. So sometimes you just want to stand up and do live streaming instead of sitting down. So I can just, you know, get my table to rise up and then I can just stand up for a while and continue talking. Um, and also, of course, at the end of the day, because you have all your gear on your table, it's very important to have a good table. Why? Sometimes your table being too shaky, if you move, okay, then your camera will stop moving as well. That can actually be a distraction and it may not be a good thing for the audience. So having a very stable table is a big plus as well, okay? So these are my gear for my own live stream setup. Um, you can see there's quite a fair bit. If you guys want to take a screenshot, you can do so as well because uh, you know some people, they, they want to have an idea of how to start all this. Um, one of the things that I also want to emphasize on the lighting setup is that I also use modifiers, soft boxes um, uh, with screams and, and, and uh, grids. It does help to you know keep the lighting soft and make me look, I guess, more pleasing to the eye. <laughs> um, it's also very advisable to have at least two monitor screens so that you can actually drag and drop uh, uh, the, the, the apps and then you know not, not get too cluttered because if you have your broadcasting software on one screen, one dedicated screen, you can focus on everything else on the other screen and make sure your live stream is a smooth one, okay? So um, here is a comparison between the Cam Link and the HDMI video capture device, which I mentioned previously. Um, you can see in the sample on the left, that's the HDMI video capture. Both the cameras are the same. Uh, I mean, one is a A6400, the other one is A6500, but pretty much the same sensor. Um, white balance, shutter speed, ISO, everything, all the settings are the same. The only difference right now is because I'm plugged in to the HDMI video capture card, which is only $12 Singapore dollars, very cheap. The other one is a Cam Link 4K, which is about 200 plus in Sing dollars. You can see the quality difference is there, all right? So even if the lighting is the same, even if the camera settings are the same, somehow the colors is, is just weird on the HDMI video capture. So this is something that you need to, uh, take into consideration when you invest in the gear. Uh, I always tell people, you know, spend within your means, don't over budget. And after that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when no one watches the live stream, then there's a problem, okay? Um, lighting matters a lot. You can see on the left side, um, the difference between using webcams and mirrorless cameras as well. So if you use a Logitech C922, for example, we're using your ceiling lights. So these are just fluorescent lighting. Um, it's not going to work very well. You, know, you can see there's a lot of shadows and I'm depending on the monitor screen for, for the lighting. It's, it's not enough. Um, but once I introduce lighting, a continuous light, like for example, aperture lighting, or you can just go for Godox or Yong Nose. Um, some people even go for cheap things like this. Just give me a sec. Okay. So I have here with me is a Yong No one Y entry 60 Two, which you can turn on and then change the lighting. Uh, so this this is also something that's very useful. You can actually use this as well, you know, to 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 light yourself up. Okay, daylight temperature. Okay, so you can actually place it somewhere and keep it plugged in so that you can still light yourself up uh, in, and have a decent amount of lighting for your shots. Um, and this actually helps with your webcam's performance because. With sufficient lighting, it can actually, you know, start to quicken, uh, sorry, uh, have a faster shutter speed. So you can actually have a better, faster rate of uh, the frame rates per second. So your, your animation, your, sorry, not, not your animation, your video capture is a lot smoother. And of course, you know, if you want to get uh, to the next level, just go get a mirrorless camera. Um, the Canon M200 is a decent device right now. A lot of people are, are trying to grab it because it's quite cheap. Um, but it can be used with the Canon webcam EOS utility software, which means you don't need to buy a capture device. So you can actually save money there and you can connect straight away to your live stream uh, broadcasting software. So the reason why I decided to go for mirrorless with a, with a very good lens at the f1.4, uh, it's a fast lens. Uh, first of all, I don't have to worry about lighting so much anymore. And because it's uh, open wide and it's still sharp, uh, the bokeh is just beautiful. So it's, it's, it's just creates depth. All right, so you need to approach your live streaming from a cinematic experience. What do you guys want your audience to see? If you want your audience uh, to see a very flat, boring picture, then maybe, you know, just stick with a webcam. But if you want to have that, you want to have a very cinematic feel, then maybe you can consider a mirrorless camera as well, okay? So 
on the right, you can see there's a, a setup for a photo shoot. This is basically what I show the audience when I do my uh, online workshops to teach them how to shoot product photography. So they can see, you know, the setup from this camera angle. So multiple camera setups actually help to uh, show audience better how to see certain things that you want to show as an example, for example, like a demonstration of the shoot, okay? So these are something else that you need to consider as well. Uh, again, it does translate into spending more, but at the end of the day, you need to understand what's your vision, what kind of uh, life you want to do. Do you want to show them exactly what you want to do in your online workshop or do you just want to talk about it, okay? Because sometimes talking about it is not enough. Showing is what matters most, okay? People will be able to learn more. They can see examples of how you set up. Um, so this is one of ways that can make a live stream a lot more exciting, okay? And people will talk. They go like, hey, hey, that day, um, uh, Petar actually ran a live stream and then he did show a live demonstration of how to set up lights. And I'm very interested. And I think it's good for you. So he'll tell his friend, Lazar, come and watch uh, Petar's live stream. So let's go and watch together. So you have two followers now. Okay, so consider that. It just adds on to your, your showmanship, right? So additional software that you will need to have, um, you can opt for two of the best broadcasting software. And I say best because it's free, <laughs> okay? There's Streamlabs OBS and there's OBS Studio. Uh, both run on 64-bit platform. So um, if you're looking at making production work, like audio, you want to play music, you want to create your own sound bites and things like that, then you probably want to invest in a software that allows you to do audio editing. For me, I went for Audacity because it's free of charge, okay? If you have Adobe Suite, you can actually go for Audition. Um, depends on what you want to do, okay? For me, as a photographer, I just use a photography suite, so I don't have Audition. Um, but yeah, Audacity is free and it works. It's, it's, it's a very good audio software, all right? Um, if you want to create graphics overlays for your live stream, then you probably need Photoshop still uh, to create all these uh, graphics that can make your uh, stream a lot more exciting. Uh, you can also have, uh, in my case, because I do a photography talk show, all right? Uh, if you have watched my live stream before, you'll see that there are times when I switch to another scene and you can see there's only two people talking. You can see the, the guest speaker as well as myself talking to each other. Um, that's why I use Zoom, all right? So you can use Zoom, uh, the, the free version does have, I think, a one hour or is it 45 minutes limit. But if you pay for the account, you, you can uh, go beyond that. Um, you can also use Skype, but uh, you must remember Skype has got this thing called the NDI restriction, which prevents you basically from streaming whatever you see on Skype. Okay, so you need to remember how to fix that. There is a way you can actually use uh, Streamlabs OBS on one screen and then ask it to... Uh, you know, capture whatever is on the second screen. So that's like a hack of some sort and it works. Um, and you can also use Microsoft Word to uh, have your script because I've encountered some uh, new live streamers who come on to the show and they literally do this in front of the screen. They're just like, hi, welcome to my live stream. And um, uh, today I'm, yeah. So there is that dead air. We call it dead air, all right? So no one is talking. People who are listening in, they are looking at, 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 at the streamer and they go like, what's going on, you know? So sometimes people get tongue-tied. They get very shocked uh, when they see people coming in to watch them. So they get very uh, shy or embarrassed or maybe nervous. So having Microsoft Word open on an iPad, for example, with your script, or maybe like just a, a few uh, point forms of what you want to cover and talk about will help because it literally gives you an idea of how to continue your content, all right? So... That being said, uh, for my photography talk show, I use uh, an iPad. You can see it's uh, on, on, okay, you can't see it here because you can see in the picture, it's on the, on the left of, of the Wacom in between the two screens. So you can see that uh, the iPad is actually very useful because it shows uh, my Microsoft Word script. Okay, so I can see the document file. I can see what I'm going to ask the interviewee next. And I don't have to like bring papers out, you know, look very weird and unprofessional. Uh, instead, I can just take a quick glance at my iPad and then be able to ask uh, the questions, the relevant questions to the interviewee. And it just looks smooth, all right? Uh, it does take a little bit of practice, but these are some of the things that you will probably encounter. And over time, it can get better, all right? So how do we uh, start Twitch? So uh, Twitch, first of all, it's absolutely free. Uh, you can just start uh, an account at twitch.tv. Um, you can opt for 2FA or 
two-factor authentication for additional security via Authy. So Authy is a, an app that you can download on your iOS or Android device and basically use some kind of code to unlock your Twitch whenever you log in. Very important because you do not want people to hack your Twitch account, all right? Uh, you can also have multiple accounts under the same email account and all you have to do is just sign up, you know, and that's pretty much it, okay? Very simple, right? So once you have your Twitch account, that's where you can start looking at broadcasting software choices. So these are the two broadcasting software choices that I personally use, okay? There's a OBS Studio and there's also uh, Streamlabs OBS. So both softwares are actually free. Um, OBS Studio is actually the, the, the first gen software that comes out for broadcasting. Um, it's open source, meaning to say that if you're a programmer, you're capable of uh, doing scripting and things like that, you can actually further develop the software on your own. But I personally prefer Streamlabs OBS because it's advanced version of OBS Studio. It has increased functionality. It has increased uh, capabilities that allow me to be a, uh, I would say, a better automated live streamer because everything is uh, set up by Streamlabs OBS. Now, OBS Studio does have a complex customization platform that you can explore, um, but... Streamlabs OBS, it's all done up for you. So for me, I, I always find that keeping things simple is better, okay? Keeping things simple is a lot better. Um, and I prefer using Streamlabs OBS because whenever I run into problems, especially when I'm live, it's easier to uh, find the issue and fix it on the fly. For OBS Studio, it can be a little bit more complex, all right? So it depends really on your own personal uh, take on the software. Um, I, I highly recommend Streamlabs OBS if it's your first time live streaming because it's just easier. Everything has got recommended settings so you can just apply them accordingly rather than try to figure out how does OBS Studio work because OBS Studio is just um, can be quite taxing for the new uh, live streamer and this can be a daunting task. Okay, So quality actually matters when you stream uh, out your, your live streaming. Uh, so, first of all, you need to, of course, uh, fix up your OBS settings properly, okay? So, one of the things that you need to do is identify which server will be working best for you when you want to connect to any streaming services. Um, in this case, because I'm using uh, Twitch, I'll just select the service as uh, Twitch, and being in Singapore, I choose the nearest server. So, there are servers all over the world uh, for, for Twitch. Um, Major countries uh, in, in Europe should have them as well. Uh, just find the one that's nearest to you and use it. Okay, so now next thing is you can see there's a stream key. Now this stream key is asterisk, you can see it's asterisk, but actually it's a number of coding and, and uh, alphabets. Very important not to lose them. Very, very important not to show them to anyone else. Okay, this stream key is actually provided by Twitch on uh, the moment you create your own uh, account. And uh, you, all you need to do is just copy from the stream key and preferences page. You can see on the small uh, window over here. Um, then, then just in, bring it over to your Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. And that's how you actually get the broadcasting software to talk to Twitch. So that whatever you are streaming on your broadcasting software, whatever you're capturing through your camera that's talking to the broadcasting software, all that information, all that feed will go to Twitch and people can now see everything that you're doing, okay? Um, it's always very important, of course, when you start live streaming to be mindful of what you have on your screen. Uh, also very mindful of what you have behind and around you when you're doing your live stream because first of all, you're going to make sure that, you know, nothing, um, nothing scandalous is happening because uh, there are some cases whereby, uh, you know, uh, some people, when they go live and they, they share screen, they forget, you know, certain emails, very important documents are open and then people are able to see it. Once it's out there, it's out there. So this is a very public platform. It's very important to actually have uh, some form of security uh, protocol set in place to make sure that you are uh, safe uh, at all times, okay? Uh, you are safe at all times. Okay, so... Um, Shares OBS and OBS settings. Uh, right now, I'm just going to show you guys... Uh, a live demonstration. Okay, just give me a sec. Let me just stop sharing here for a while. So I'll just run through quickly how the app looks like. Okay, let me just open them up. 
and share again. Screen one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so right now I'm actually starting uh, StreamX OBS and I've got uh, OBS Studio on my right. I'll just drag it over to the first window in a bit. There we go. Okay, so um, you can see that right now on Zoom, it's basically uh, two softwares running side by side. Okay, I'm not going to show uh, exactly what is going on in terms of the webcams and all that. But I will share with you guys uh, some of the settings and some of the key components of the software that will make things work. So at a glance, when you compare side by side, the interface for um, Streamlabs OBS and uh, OBS Studio are two different things altogether. It, it is very different, okay? But the fundamentals are the same. You have your sources and scenes here. Uh, sources, sorry, sources here, sources here, scenes here on the left as well. Uh, you also have your mixer for your audio. You have your um, stats. Okay, for OBS Studio, it's on the right, and for Streamless OBS, it's at the bottom. So pretty much the software is almost the same. Okay, and you can see that this is actually live right now. There's a I have another camera that's uh, pointing to uh, this 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 uh, platform on Streamless OBS. So right now, you can see that there's actually a mini feed over here, an activity feed over here. So anytime there's interaction between the participants and audience members in Twitch with your channel, with your live stream, you'll see it here as well. So this is pretty much like a command console. Everyone who is watching live stream, they will not be able to see this, but you are the one who's able to see all this and you can control everything, okay? From the things like titles, you can even chat with your audience directly uh, by typing over here, okay, or over here. In in Streamlabs OBS, um, this is like the heart and soul of your live stream, okay? So uh, let's just go through one by one first. Okay, so this is the overall look for Streamlabs OBS. Um, you can see here on the interface here in the middle, that's what the audience will see. Okay, this is literally what the audience will see, but this is also where you can make changes to your overlay. So if you click on any of the components, you can actually literally move things around, okay? Similarly, you can uh, do the same for OBS Studio, but um, yeah, this is actually where we can, we can move your widgets. So you can see there are also bars over here. These are actually overlays for uh, my Razor Tip Stream, uh, which actually uh, takes note of uh, variables such as number of followers that are coming in. Um, you can set up your goals here so that people can see that, ah, okay, so in this case, uh, The Amazing Live Show wants to have 500 followers. So right now we have 487. You can see the percentage increases every single time someone follows. So this is like a, one of those things that make your live stream a little bit more exciting. Uh, at the same time also, you can see at the bottom here, there's a bar. So if people actually donate through my live stream, they can see the, the their names appear and how much they donated. So it's, it's, it's very interactive, you know, uh, and people can see how much other people have donated as well. So it can compel other people to follow through and go like, hey, you know what? I also want to donate and I want to show support for my live streamer. Okay, so all this is basically your, your viewer panel. You can add all your overlays. Um, and all this actually talks to whatever sources you have implemented over here. So everything here um, in, the, in, in the main viewing screen actually is reflected by what you've done in the sources panel. So sources, you can actually edit and you can uh, add uh, things like images, you can add like browser sources, um, NDI source like Skype. Remember Skype just now I said there's a NDI lockdown, uh, lockup. So you need to enable it over here. Um, but trust me, don't use Skype if you were to live stream. It, it just sucks, okay? Just use Zoom or use something else altogether. Just don't use Skype. Skype is just not friendly, okay? Um, you can also put uh, another camera here. So video capture device is actually your, your, your webcam, all right, or your mirrors camera. And these are all widgets that can be, uh, you know, added onto your viewing panel so that it responds to any form of actions uh, undertaken by your audience. So if people donate, um, you know, for, for, your, for your live stream, uh, you will see things like donation goals and big goals reacting to what you're doing. So these are some of the things they can add. And all you have to do is just click on, uh, for example, add source, okay? You can actually just click on add and then after that, it'll just appear and you can just uh, customize it to your heart's content. And of course, you can right click it and then have a, a better way of managing your, your, your components or your uh, variables in your viewing screen, okay? So scenes is where you can actually 
change what the audience sees. Okay, you can scroll through, and this is what I use to um, uh, let the audience see what I want them to see. And they are all these scenes are talking to my stream decks. So if I were to change scenes, okay, let me just uh, share another screen. Let me check USB video device. Ooh. One second. I think my camera's asleep. Okay, so now you guys can see um, on my main screen, okay, you can see that I, this is actually my setup. Okay, you can see there's a, a Wacom tablet over here where I have my zoom panel and this is my control console. So you can see everything. So if I were to press buttons here, let's say for example, I change, okay, they react accordingly. So at a quick press of the button, people can see the, the changes on my screen right then I have to go through the mouse and then you know click on one by one so this is when I do my live stream this is exactly what you see okay I can I can be seated here my iPad is the one with all the the document files so I can read off the script okay and it's just accessible the most important thing is that everything has to be accessible but whoever is watching they can't see what's going on so if people see your behind the scenes it may look messy but remember you're just like a magic show right like a magician people can see only what you want to see. So nobody can see my iPad when I'm streaming, but it's actually here. So it's just a, a point of reference that I can use uh, to ensure that people can see what I want them to see, okay? Right. Okay, so back here again, um, now we go through some of the settings to ensure that when you start live streaming, you will actually have a better, uh, uh, experience or rather your audience will have a better experience okay so in this case um, when you start with your stream okay the first things first when you install the software etc etc uh, all this in the first segment under general don't touch it okay you don't have to change anything even even the software wants you not to delete anything or press any buttons okay uh, the most important thing is that you need to click on stream button okay the stream button is very important because this is uh, where you can have um, uh, access to different uh, streaming services. So normally you can click on recommended, uh, recommended settings so you can actually see that it's linked to uh, whatever um, account you have. Okay, in this case, I have Twitch. You can also multi-stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time if you want. But this actually requires additional payment if I'm not wrong. You need to apply for the Prime account for Streamrest OBS to have them uh, unlocked. Okay. Um, but for me, I just prefer to use my own personal service. Uh, so in this case, you can see I have selected Twitch. And if you want to stream to other platforms, you can actually change it over here as well. Okay, um, Mixer doesn't exist anymore. They got bought over by uh, Facebook. If I'm not wrong, they got sold away by Microsoft. Uh, you can actually go for YouTube. You can go for Facebook Live. Or if you have a Restream account, a okay, Restream actually basically allows you to stream to multiple other platforms across the board all at the same time, but it's additional cost, right? So this is something I generally don't advise people to use. Just stick to one platform, to be honest. It's the best way to create a community. Um, and yeah, you can, you can go to Facebook, you can go to Twitch, but try to stick to just one platform. And it's very important also to just stick to one platform because... Uh, you do not want to have your community divided into multiple platforms and then everyone is all over the place and that is not really good for community building. So server-wise, you can change. Okay, you can select, I think, uh, I'm not very good with my map, so I'm not sure where it would be nearest to Serbia right now, but uh, there are some European servers uh, that you can uh, follow. Okay, for those people who are watching from USA, you can actually choose your American servers as well. Okay, so... This is just purely automatic. Okay, once you select the server, once you have your stream key installed, remember this stream key is from your uh, Twitch account, it will all be automatically done up for you in the background and all you have to do is just worry about the stream. But in order to make a good stream better in terms of quality, okay, you can actually go for the output section and make some changes here. 
Now, I always stick to simple. I do not want to go into advanced because advanced is, is, uh, can be quite a nightmare. There's additional things to worry about. Simple works for me because, yeah, when it comes to live streaming, trust me, keeping things simple is the best. All right. Um, for Twitch, the cap rate for video bit rate is 6,000 kilobytes per second. Uh, it's very important to go as high as you can um, because you, if you want to have the best image quality, you have to go as high as you can. But bear in mind that for some countries uh, where the servers or the ISPs are not that good, um, anything above 3,500 may result in choppy views. So you have to test and try. You have to make sure that uh, you know your, your, your number values here actually works best for you because... I, I can't say what numbers are best for, for your country or your region, but I can share with you that the higher the better, okay, in terms of quality, all right? Uh, but again, uh, inversely, uh, the higher the video bit rate, or even though you have better quality images, you will encounter more stress in terms of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, resources for your computer, and you may also encounter viewers who may not be able to catch up. Okay, especially if they're watching from a 3G connection. If they're using 4G on your mobile devices, it's not so bad, right? Uh, Encoder-wise, there are a few types. Um, I will say that NVENC is the best for new uh, video cards. Like, for example, I use the RTX 2080, so I just go for the new ones. Um, otherwise, you can go for the mid-range, you know, legacy one. Or if you don't have a video card that is able to do it so well, just go for software. But that being said, if you use software X246, uh, sorry, X264, um, the rendering is going to be very slow and it's going to force your CPU to take up the load for rendering. And that's not a good thing because um, when you're live streaming, it's quite a resource intensive uh, exercise for your computer. If you're using a laptop and you are using software rendering, it's going to put a lot of uh, stress on your CPU and you might risk overheating. You might risk having... Uh, uh, depleting batteries or you might even you know have problems with your entire setup because your computer will start to slow down quite drastically um, audio bit rate I just keep to 160 there is a cap of course um, you can go for higher if you want but I always stick to 160 because um, when you live stream there is a diminishing returns at higher kilobytes per second bit rate so at 160 is more than enough and that's pretty much it okay so recording, you don't have to worry about unless you want to record while you're live streaming, which again, also adds into your, your computer resources. Um, replay buffer, I always keep it to 20 by default and that's pretty much it, okay? So audio, um, very important. You need to ensure that your audio devices are selected correctly. Uh, in this case, uh, it's disabled right now because I'm using a headset, but normally it's pointing to my speakers. Um, and you need to make sure that your microphone is done up correctly. Okay, because right now in my computer system, I have two microphones. I have the Yeti and I have a, the Razer headset. So I'll just choose the Yeti because the Yeti is so much better. That being said, um, sample rate, just go for 48 kilohertz. It's fine. You don't, you don't have to go too high. Uh, video resolution, of course, uh, it really depends on you uh, and what you want to achieve. So for me, I like to go all the way up to 2560 uh, by uh, 1440 because I have uh, native monitors at this resolution. Um, I don't really go higher than that because uh, not, it's, first of all, it's not possible. <laughs> but uh, if I were to switch to a 4K screen, I'll still stick to around these settings because if I were to do tutorials and editing and I want people to see what I'm doing, uh, if I use a 4K screen, nobody can see exactly what I'm doing because everything's going to be so tiny. So you need to remember that um, at the end of the day, what do you want to do? If you're doing a tutorial on Photoshop, for example, and you're trying to teach people how to use uh, certain functions within Photoshop, it's always advisable to just go with 1080p or 2K resolution so people can see what you're doing clearly rather than try to screen their way and see the tiny fonts within the 4K screen. Okay. Uh, and of course, you know, the higher resolution that you have, the the more stress it will put on your system as well. And some people, they, they may not be able to catch up. They may not be able to watch the stream at 1440p. So they'll probably have to down rest to about maybe 720 or 1080p to be, have a smoother experience. Okay. But then again, this is something that's beyond your control. It just adds choices. Okay. Uh, FPS values, just keep it at 60 is fine. 
uh, everything else is the same. And you have other additional um, hotkeys that you can set up. I, I don't really bother with this because I use my stream decks. Um, and basically everything here, you don't have to really touch. Um, if you are peculiar about your video formatting, then yes, you can play around the color spaces here. Uh, scene collections, nope, nothing much. Okay, everything else is basically um, uh, everything else is basically set to default. Okay, I don't touch anything else. So Prime is basically the uh, additional thing that you can have. Okay, so you need to actually buy it. I, I don't bother with it because you know I, it's it's just unnecessary. <laughs> Again, unnecessary expenditure. But you can look into it if you want, um, especially if you want to create uh, additional um, overlays. You know, you can check them out as well. So this is Streamlabs. Um, everything else is quite easy to to rep, uh, understand because you know it's it's self-explanatory. Uh, mixer is for audio. You can see there's also icons here, so you can actually have uh, more controls on how to set your audio. Um, it's always good to make sure that you have your audio monitoring done right because you do not want to have audio feedback. If you notice right now when I'm talking, it's just my voice full stop. All right, there's no echo. But if I were to accidentally switch the button strongly and I have my speaker on, then I have audio feedback. Um, again, it's also very important to actually have uh, a, a decent headset uh, because if you have your microphone too near your mic, uh, your speaker, you will get audio feedback, that that, that E sound, you know, that, that echoey sound that, that's really bad, right? So try to avoid that kind of scenario. Okay, so when we actually test all this, uh, sorry, done up all the, the, the setups, okay? What we want to do is, of course, uh, we also want to have like a test function to make sure everything's okay. So clicking on test widgets, if you click on follow, there we go. Can you see the interaction? There's this window here and window here. Um, these are something that I added over here so that I can see exactly what's going on when someone follows me or subscribes to my channel. Um, fully customizable, you can do a lot of things with it. Again, if you're, you're good at scripting, you can do a lot of wonderful stuff. Let's see if I double tap on this uh, events list. You can see there's all these things which, you know, is HTML. You can, you can do a lot of editing. Um, this, I just basically download from somewhere. I don't, I'm not a good programmer, so I, I just use other people's template and it's fine. All right, it's okay. Um, that being said, this is a good way to make sure everything looks good on your stream. Um, it's one of those ways that you can actually make sure that when you go live, everything works the way you want it to. Okay. And on right here, this is where you can chat with your participants okay, or your audience. Okay. You can see exactly what they're saying here and you can respond either by typing or you can just respond by talking to the camera. So this is uh, pretty much a, a rundown of uh, how you can interact with uh, the audience. Uh, the rest is just stats to see whether you're online, whether how many viewers you have. Uh, but don't be too concerned about number of viewers, okay? Uh, when you first start out live streaming. Now, I, I'm just going to sidetrack a little bit over here and just talk a little bit about the psychological effect of looking at this zero viewers number stat thingy, all right? Uh, when you first start the live streaming, don't be surprised if you can only see maybe about one or two people watching the live stream or maybe even zero. Um, that's because you haven't built your community up yet. People have not discovered you yet. Um, just keep on going, all right? Uh, be consistent. Just keep on trying. I know it sucks to see there's no one watching, but pay no attention to it, okay? You'll be surprised at what will happen down the road. Maybe give you a couple of days or weeks even. People will discover you, and if they like your content, they will stay on, all right? Now, let's look at OBS Studio. So uh, these days, OBS Studio, I just use it for gaming. I don't use it for my live streaming talk show. The reason being is because I want to have two separate softwares that do not overlap one another. So I can keep one setting for my live stream show and I can keep one setting for my gaming, all right? So I have two Twitch accounts, one for gaming, one for photography. Uh, again, this is part of my strategy. Basically, I started two different accounts because I do not want my audience to overlap one another. Uh, and plus, you know, I want to keep my stream clutter-free. Everything that has to do with gaming is just on the gaming channel. Everything to do with photography and the photography talk show, it's on the photography channel. So this is one of the ways that you can actually do so to, to uh, have a more uh, organized feed. And I think it's a lot better, right? So um, 
like I said previously, OBS Studio is fully customizable, so you can actually drag and drop. You can move things around. Uh, Streamers OBS, you can do so as well, but it's not as much. Um, same as uh, Streamers OBS. Okay, you have your settings here. If you notice, the settings are pretty much identical. Okay, uh, you can see that the settings is more or less identical. It's just transferred over from Streamers OBS, and I basically have got the same setup because it just works. Okay? Here's the thing about live streaming, guys. If you are live streaming and if your settings work for one software, just copy the same settings to the next one and it should be fine. Especially when it's two broadcasting software made by pretty much the same source code. So StreamX OBS and OBS Studio does share quite a few things and that includes uh, how they understand the streaming capabilities. Okay. Um, Again, video, I didn't change much. It's the same as the Streamers OBS. I go for Color Space 709 and I color reach full so I can have more control basically over how I want people to see how I look like, right? So in terms of setting, uh, it's, it's pretty much uh, the same as Streamers OBS. Uh, the only difference, of course, is the interface. It does look a little bit more um, cluttered or advanced even, depending on how you look at it. But uh, sorry. I don't have a way sorry. to compare those. Hey, Google, stop. <laughs> <laughs> also, make sure Google does not interrupt you while you're live streaming. Um, then, when you are ready to go live, okay, depending on whether you're using Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, you will see that uh, there's this button here that says go live for Streamlabs OBS and start streaming for OBS Studio. So once you're ready to go, just click on it. I'm not going to click on it because I don't want to start live streaming now. Uh, but once you click on it, you'll be prompted with a dialog that asks you to confirm the title for your live stream, make sure they got it right. And it's always good to, you know, uh, let people know exactly what you're live streaming. So in this case, I'm actually live streaming Counter-Strike Go because I'm playing Counter-Strike. Um, or in this case, um, let me just click on it. Okay. So I can see that uh, I'm doing a photography AMA, late night chat, and I'm telling people about how I'm actually working on my presentation on live streaming and just, just want people to come online and just chat with me. You can do that as well. And you can also tell Streamlabs OBS to share your stream with the Twitter account, with your Twitter account that you've connected with. Um, a few things to consider though. Uh, what some of us have discovered is that if you allow Streamlabs OBS, or even when you tell people to follow you on Twitch nonstop, oh, sorry, on Twitter nonstop, it can appear as spammy, and uh, people may not generally want to see of it, uh, see see that. So do that sparingly, not all the time. Okay, so this is again something else uh, that you can consider. Right? Uh, it's always good to have tags as well, so you can actually tell people exactly what you are streaming, and then people can identify and discover you better. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much the, the same thing both ways, okay? You, you, you literally have a similar concept for those, uh, both broadcasting software, but uh, it's just a, a, a massive change in the interface. Um, it's always good practice, of course, to um, uh, be organized and create scenes separately. So the reason why I use the stream is because I got so many scenes, okay? That's, that's just the way it is, this reality, how I run my talk, talk show. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio. Quick comparison, and I hope you actually took down the settings uh, so you can uh, you know follow through in terms of your own uh, layout and setup uh, later on. Okay, let me just stop share for a bit. Okay, the other thing is, if you notice, I'm still having my camera from the back because every time you run a broadcasting software, if uh, let's say a camera is active, uh, it will not be able to show the other camera that's running. Okay, so you need to remember this also in case you run into problems. So sometimes when you're running live streaming and you have additional cameras and another software that's talking to the camera, there'll be a conflict in hardware and you will not be able to see these cameras run at the same time. So it's always good practice to just one, to just run just one broadcasting software at a time. Don't run two at the same time or you have trouble. Um, the reason why I decided to get two cameras for Zoom, uh, sorry, for my live stream channel is because I'm using this one here for my uh, live stream channel, the, the original one, and I'm using another camera here. Okay, this camera here is uh, the, the other camera that's meant for Zoom. So you can see that it's slightly different angle because the camera is side by side, uh, but this actually prevents my hardware from having any conflicts if I were to open up Zoom and Streamers OBS at the same time, okay? So this is something that you need to consider as well. 
Um, of course, you can use a webcam. You don't have to use a mirrorless camera as a secondary camera. Uh, it really depends on what exactly you want to achieve. Okay. Right. Let's get back to the presentation. Right. So um, settings wise, it's, it's pretty much clear cut. Uh, you, you can experiment with it. Uh, speaking of a uh, bit rate, uh, you may want to go as low as 3,500. Anything lower than that, you might see pixels in your image quality for your live streaming. So that's something that you may want to avoid. Um, the other thing is when you stream, <coughs> it's always good practice to have some kind of music to entertain your guests and your audience. Um, but unfortunately, because Twitch is uh, just like YouTube and any other platform really, um, they have to follow the guidelines set by the DMCA. Uh, in this case, they are the ones to look out for um, unlicensed playback of music. Okay, So uh, there are some Spotify accounts out there that create uh, music specifically for live streaming and they are kind enough to share it and uh, basically make them royalty free online. So for example, um, you have Harry Taylor's stream beats on Spotify. This is lo-fi music. It's very, very nice to listen to. Um, and you can just literally play it on your stream and people can listen to them while they're watching you. It just creates a very nice atmosphere. Okay. Um, if you want to play fast music, then yeah, by all means carry on. But it's always good to just play something chill and relax while doing a photography talk show or a photography edit. Okay. Um, you can hear the background music, I think. It's just playing in the background softly. So this is actually part of Spotify's, uh, uh, sorry, part of Harry's Heller's stream beats on Spotify that I always play on my live stream. Um, be very careful also, of course, uh, when you load up any videos or when you play any music on Twitch, uh, even if it's a video that you have captured from somewhere with music inside, uh, it can actually be hit with a strike off by Twitch because it's going against the, um, the DMCA guidelines. So I've actually put a link here to help you understand better what the DMCA guidelines are all about. So you can avoid making mistakes where, where some of your Twitch episodes or Twitch streams can be muted, you know, uh, regardless of how, how you try to, to diffuse the music or to, to hide the music <coughs> or distort the music. Somehow the, the bot crawlers will still find a way and yeah, it, it, it can be quite embarrassing if you have a stream and there's no sound, not even your voice because when they mute your stream, they literally mute everything, okay, including your voice. So if your voice disappears and you're just like doing this in front of the webcam, it, it looks very sad, right? So, so try to avoid that kind of scenario. So content is king. It's very important you know, to actually have all the, the gear, it's also very important to have all the setup and make it look nice and all that. But uh, at the end of the day, content is king because you want to make sure that people have a genuine interest in what you want to share, what you want to talk about. Uh, so in my case, because I run a photography talk show, I have to ensure that I know my angle, I know my story, I know exactly what I want to talk about. Um, I need to do research. Okay, I need to do a lot of research. I need to understand whether the people I'm bringing onto the show is an ideal interviewee. Uh, can you imagine if I bring someone who's not able to talk about what he or she does? You know, it's, it's going to be very embarrassing for him and her and even for myself because the audience will be expecting to see something but nothing's happening on screen. So that's, that's very bad. Um, you also got to make sure that at the end of the day to create more following, perhaps you can consider whether your content is still relevant or new or trendy or you know it, in general basically have an interesting uh, angle all right um, you also need to make sure your interview knows what they're talking about especially with regards to knowledge um, and I think it's, uh, it's du the duty of us hosts on Twitch to ensure that whatever information whatever educational material we're dishing out and, and sharing with the audience it's accurate we got to make sure that whatever they're learning is the real deal. It's not some cooked up BS, you know, like a lot of people that will like try to fake their way through. Uh, and some of the audience members, you'd be surprised. They may know more than you. Like for example, right now I'm doing my live streaming talk. Maybe someone out there is watching right now is better at live streaming than me or has a bigger following and you know, look at me and go like, oh, actually that's not right. You know, these things can happen if you're doing live streaming because there are people who may be uh, a bigger photographer than you and they look at you and go like, yeah, you're teaching them the wrong thing and that may not be good. Okay, if they call you out, that's a problem. 
um, you also need to come up with a way to prompt your interviewee because if your interviewee is silent or the silent type, very quiet type, very shy, um, you need to find ways of how to make them feel comfortable. You need to find ways of how to make them come up with your answers and responses that you want so that your live stream can carry on. And uh, the other thing is, if you want to have a big following very easily, you can consider having interviewees who are popular, all right? or maybe someone who's well-known. Uh, this can significantly improve the number of viewership and I think uh, you know, in, in the event that you want people to come back and watch your live streams, perhaps you can have, um, I wouldn't say a promise, but more of a consistent uh, uh, flow of guest speakers who are able to command uh, a high following. Okay? Because you must remember, it's text, all right? So if you have a good number of followers who already follow your stuff, it stacks up with the number of followers who are following the interviewee, interested to find the interviewee, interested to see what he or she has to say on your live stream. And if they somehow enjoy the content that you're providing on your live stream platform, maybe they can be turned into your own fans and followers as well. So everything stacks up, just make sure you remain consistent and just play cool. Don't need to be so, uh, you know, uh, don't need to be so hard aged when it comes to uh, the number of followers. Uh, just enjoy yourself, enjoy the stream, and make sure that everything works well in in uh, overall. All right. Um, for myself, because I, I want to make sure that my interview is not caught off guard during the live stream, because when they are caught off guard, it can be very very embarrassing because everything is live. Um, it's always a good. Uh, idea to send the questions beforehand so that they can uh, you know have an understanding of what you're going to ask during your live stream all right for example i'm just going to share real quickly how some of my questions look like uh, let's share okay i'm going to share something that nobody has seen before so you guys are like the first to see this uh, when I do my live streaming, I actually have got these questions laid out for them. So in this case, uh, episode 45 of The Amazing Live Show, I did my research and I interviewed Lilian Liu on my live stream. And I actually did all this. I actually typed it out and I sent it to her and I even like wrote in red you know, for her actions, what she needs to do. Um, sometimes prompts, you know, in case, uh, you know, we, we have dead air but normally most of the interviews I have on my show are really good because I already look at their profile I, I understand where they're coming from and I, I and I basically create the questions so that it sort of guides them to answer in a very comfortable state um, and yeah the amount of research that goes in is insane so you need to make sure that you have dedicated enough time to come up with all these questions before you actually go on your live stream um how many days does it take for me to come up with all these questions? To be honest, I think about one and a half uh, because I have other work in between. But this is the kind of effort that you need to consider putting in to ensure that when you go into your, your live stream proper, um, first of all, your interview is more prepared and the audience will be able to enjoy a much better live streaming. Okay. Um, is it okay for, for the audience to see the questions? No, it's not. Okay, we do not want the audience to see the questions at all. It's secret. Um, why? If you watch a show on TV, normally um, uh, the, 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 the actors and the actresses, they do not have the script in hand. They don't walk around the paper, you know. So everything has to be like hidden from view. No one is able to see that there's a script. No one is able to see there's a question list. Just make it look very natural and it will actually make your live stream look a lot more uh, professional. Okay? A lot better. All right? Okay, so pre-production work. Yes, just like doing vlogs and videography or even cinematic uh, projects, uh, it's always good to have some pre-production work done beforehand. Uh, so in my case, I always go into these five steps, right? So first of all, I do research for the next guest speaker. I try to figure out what to do uh, with them I, because this is ultimately all about content creation. I need to make sure that content is priority. And of course, you know, um, Number two, it's very important to confirm the schedule. Twitch works like this, just like any other platform in social media. You need to have consistency. You need to always appear at the same time where followers expect you to appear. 
so for my case, I am streaming twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesdays 8 p.m. Singapore time, Saturdays 5 p.m. Singapore time, and I tell people this is where I'm streaming, this is when I'm streaming, this is the schedule, etc., etc. And over time, my followers understand. Okay, look, Tuesday is evening time, 8 p.m. I'm gonna be on to watch Mizami's talk or Mizami's live stream. So they they just keep on coming back at the correct time. Um, so when it comes to your schedule, you need to make sure that your interviews can meet your schedule as well. Um, it's not a good idea to change the schedule because you know the interviewee maybe is a different time zone. Uh, you need to work something out, right? So always talk to your interviewee, ask them nicely, can you guys come on? Uh, like Marco was nice enough to ask me whether I'm available on 6th of August at 12 p.m. Serbian time and so here I am. Uh, because I, I have nothing else to do <laughs> today. So I'm available. So since I'm available, I can make time for this uh, webinar session. So similarly, if you're working with uh, uh, the interviewees, uh, apart from checking with the schedule, you can also check with them what other things can they provide. Like for example, video trailers, uh, YouTube channels, uh, social media links, things that they can share like photos, um, profile photos create material okay so you can create uh, some interesting stuff to to help the uh, your followers as well as their followers understand that you're gonna have an episode of your live streaming with them um, and then after that you, you gotta spread the word okay you you, you can actually see um, you know people will, will identify that there are some advertising or marketing materials that will point to your live stream and they'll make time for your live stream and this is one of the ways you can actually you know get the following uh one day before go time sometimes i will run a test check to make sure everything is okay um it's always important that as a live streamer your responsibility lies with making sure the audio and visuals are all perfectly fine um come online early uh, at least half an hour max uh, before the show starts and you know make sure that everything's working okay because there are times where Stream apps, OBS or OBS Studio or Windows even especially has updates and sometimes these updates they will break your software so it's very important to know this make sure you are prepared okay if there are some changes you need to make make sure they are done before the live stream <clears throat> so at the same time also because you have presented the interviewees with the questions uh, you can actually ask them for updates, you know, whether they feel there's some questions which are not comfortable to, for them to answer. Um, but generally, you don't go and ask personal questions too much, right? Maybe you can just touch a little bit about the background and history, but don't go ask things like, who's your boyfriend, who's your girlfriend, where do you live, this kind of thing. Don't. Because remember, you are on a public platform. Um, doxing is very real. People love to f stalk people when they are not of sound mind. So it's always very important to make sure that your audience uh, will not be able to has to have access to all this kind of private information, um, especially when you're interviewing, uh, uh, you know, models, female models or male models, whatever. You know, some some people can get a little bit crazy and they want to find out where they live and things like that. So be very very mindful of these kind of things as well. Uh, number five, if you have reached a certain level as a live streamer, sometimes brands and organizations can approach you and they may want to collaborate with you. And this, again, depending on what you get out of it and what you want and what they get out of it, it has to be a beneficial relationship. You can do things like giveaways and competitions uh, or even do shout out for sponsorships and things like that. And this can actually elevate your live streaming platform to the next level because certain brands are famous and people who see you affiliated with certain brands, they go like, oh, this guy is affiliated with so-and-so brand, you know, that shows that this person has got caliber and they will want to work with you or watch you. So this is something that can help you as well. And of course, you know, who doesn't like giveaways? You know, every time people come on stream, sometimes they expect freebies, they expect giveaways. These are all like, you know, um, like baits, you know, they will come back and all that. But is it good to have a giveaway all the time? No, because at the end of the day, uh, it dilutes the, the reason why you do the live stream in the first place. You're not there to give products away. You're there to teach people and share knowledge with, with people. So all these giveaway stuff, you can consider them as a way to bring back the follower uh, numbers. But uh, don't do it too often. Otherwise, people have expectations that you're, bringing, you're, you're gonna give away everything, <laughs> every one episode. So that's not a good thing, all right? So just be mindful of that as well. So during the actual show, um, it's always good to follow the plan 
all right don't deviate from the plan otherwise you might panic because at the end of the day you decide for example how long you want to live stream and you already have an idea of how you want to do it like for example my talk show is two hours long you i already have a plan idea of how i'm going to do it it's all in the script okay but if if let's say for example you don't have a script and you just want to talk maybe it's an ama uh, ask me anything channel uh sorry ask me anything episode um make sure you have some backup points to talk about because if you have deep air it will kill your channel all right because you're just staring at the audience and the audience is waiting for you nothing's happening it can get very boring all right so that's something that you want to avoid um know your cues understand exactly when you want to change the the scenes uh if you are unsure practice make sure you don't press the wrong buttons because it can be quite embarrassing if you do um has that ever happened to me yes i have accidentally played the wrong trailer because i forgot to update the trailer in the stream deck um if that happens don't panic just say oops i messed up all right let me try to fix it make a joke out of it okay basically and and that's fine all right that's okay um when you're talking to the guests make sure you don't interrupt or make sure you don't overlap your voices because to you it sounds okay to the audience and to the guests they'll get irritated because you are trying to be domineering we know it's your show but be respectful of your guests and make sure that they can be heard and listened to as well uh always make sure your levels for audio is correct and make sure that audience uh can hear everything clearly um never use your speakers or headset as a means to see whether the audio is fine you need to make sure that your visual cues to make sure that the audio levels are actually okay so if you see that it's redlining maybe it's distortion uh in distortion ready so you got to make sure that you pull down the volume uh, or pull down the output make sure everything is stable okay um and as you go along as you live stream more and more you probably encounter some problems here and there and no matter how professional you are as a live stream when things happen when when okay when shit happens shit really happens so you have no choice so murphy's law is a very real thing even as photographers we also have uh, encountered this kind of problems before hardware failure camera equipment failure maybe my camera hang like what happened just now you know that kind of thing um just go with the flow relax fix the problem and move on and that being said it's always good to you know find off days when you're not streaming to test all your gear make sure everything's okay and if you find that there's problems test again and see to make sure that you know how to fix the problem okay very very important So if you're doing live editing and retouching, make sure that your software is updated. It's very important. Um and of course you need to do your research. You need to know what you're talking about. You need to make sure that your content is again relevant and exciting. Uh but here's the thing. When you're sharing photos, when you're doing live editing, you need to be very mindful of uh photo safety. Okay? First of all, uh Twitch does not take too kindly to nudity. Uh so if you're streaming something like maybe nude fine art photography portraits or something like that um if if there's like a, a shot of a nipple for example okay then you might actually release uh realize that uh twitch will probably give you a warning at first or they can ban you so try to avoid that kind of scenario be very mindful of what you share on screen it's always good to to have something that's uh more neutral you know like a uh you just got to be sensible basically what you share on screen when you're doing all this live you're touching and editing and of course very important if you're shooting for clients check with your clients to see whether there's any nda restrictions because there are cases in the past where some photographers are editing uh photos for their clients and they did not clear the nda it created some unnecessary friction between him and the client so try to avoid that kind of scenario because some clients are very iffy about this um and When you are doing your live editing and retouching, explain what you're doing, share what you're doing, tell people what you're doing. Regardless whether you have zero viewers or one viewer or 10 viewers or 20 or 30, just keep on talking and pay attention to the chat window because sometimes people do say something like for example you can see in in here there's a lot of chatter here. Um this is where they can interact with you directly. So, you know, when the audience is talking, listen and read. Okay, take a glance, take a quick look and see what they have to say and respond because people being people enjoy it when people listen to them. So if I were to ask a question in the chat window and the audience uh and, and the live streamer ignores me completely, will I want to stay on for the live stream? I don't think so because man, the live streamer just completely ignore me. I I I'm I'm ignored completely. 
I, I'm not being cared for, right? So I know some people are self-entitled like that, but you know, human beings, humans, um, they, they, they just want to be heard. And this is very important. If you want to create a following, you want to create a community, you must listen to your audience as well, okay? Um, and ultimately, because you're doing educational material, uh, educational stuff, you got to make sure that at the end, do people learn anything from you? When you are sharing all this, you got to make sure that you're teaching them something. So it adds value to watching a live stream. And people, you know, they see a live stream, go like, oh, look at that. You know, this content is really good. I'll come back again. And that's, again, that's how you build your following. Um, that being said, there are some photographers out there who actually create such a huge following that they start their own Discord server. Um, not, not the same as the, the, the Twitch photography team that you saw just now. They start their own uh, channels and they invite people to join them and share their works and things like that. So it has a lot of, um, you know, multiple facets of uh, photography uh, in, in terms of uh, live streaming. You know, you can create a content and at the same time, you can create a community and you can actually bring this community to another platform and interact with them further. And at the end of the day, it's just about making friends and this is how the community works, okay? Um, so... As mentioned before so many times, <laughs> create a following. Um, if you want to spread word about your live stream, you have to create a following. You can use your existing social media platforms to propagate this population on your live streaming follower list. Um, you can advertise, but be very strategic about it because sometimes, you know, for Facebook especially, Facebook is not too kind uh, if you were to show links for maybe YouTube. Okay, they will make it harder for other people to see. So you, know, you need to be very mindful of what you're doing. Um, if you want to, you can actually apply for uh, sponsorships and uh, affiliate programs for brands. Some of them provide them as well. But you need to be mindful of what kind of brands you're looking for and what kind of brands you want to work with. Um, make sure it's of a certain uh, caliber. Don't don't go for, for brands which are unknown, you know, like some random company and they don't really make sense to, to be partners with. You're a photographer. Find brands that has to do something with photography. So, yeah, you can consider that as well. Um, but never back brands or organizations for sponsorships because that's a major turnoff. It never back or, you know, or even worse, steal sponsorships from people. Yeah, there, there are cases where people do that where they write in and say, that, hey, don't go and support this other live streamer, support me instead. And then, you know, some brands actually do that. They drop it. Uh, they drop the original streamer. That's, that's not really cool, right? Um, you can also create more awareness for your live stream by collaborating with other live streamers. Uh, maybe you can, you know, be invited to other people's live streams and then talk about your work and then share, hey, you know, if you want to share, uh, if you want to come and see my live stream, I also have a channel and this is my link, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you, it can happen as well. Now for Twitch, they also have a way uh, uh, to help propagate your channel by using the highlights and clips. Um, so I'm just going to show real quickly how highlights and clips look like. One second. Okay, let me just drag this one over here. Okay, so right now you can see this is actually my, my uh, live stream channel. Okay. Um, so when people come in, they can see that, you know, there's a channel trailer over here. They can scroll through some of my previous uh, broadcasts. Uh, but most importantly, a lot of people, they tend to do this. Uh, they ignore everything here and they just go to videos and they look for clips. So clips are basically bite-sized videos of um, what you have shot before uh, or what you have live streamed. And I like to do something like, like for example, this one here. I like to find quotes, quotes which are really good that that can resonate very well with other uh, photographers. So I'll keep trying. So like, let's say for example, I got the SC Shekar here to share his thoughts on what are the most important aspects of photography. So let's take a listen. Well, keep trying all the time. Keep trying different genres of photography, but and, and understand that no matter what kind of genre you're in, whether it's documentary photography, whether it's street photography, whether it's architecture, there's only two things that you need to have. You need to have respect and you need to have empathy. Empathy and respect is will take you a long way. Yep. Now, what do I mean by this? You know, when you're photographing anyone, have empathy. Understand how it is they're feeling. And your pictures will speak so much more 
will have so much more feeling if you have that feeling when you take these pictures and respect for everything that you photograph whether it's the rainforest or whether it's a beautiful building and all that will actually show up in your images it will okay so something like that uh, basically a one minute clip from the entire live stream which lasts for two hours just to give a people idea of what you actually can present or bring to the table okay and normally it's it's a uh, reviewable um, it does capture a little bit of the chat window as well so this is something you can consider to help you know uh, let people understand that hey at the end of the day if you watch a live stream this is what you can expect for the show um, wise quotes from other photographers very interesting quotes from other photographers okay so uh, you can also uh, do things like this where you actually have let me just switch. There we go. Where you can actually have um, uh, highlights. Highlights are longer. You can actually go up to hours. Uh, clips are just one minute max. So you can do that as well. And uh, you can actually check your insights to strategize. I, I can't share my insights because they are private. But basically, insights actually can uh, allow you to see where you stand as a live streamer and give you a better idea of how to strategize your live streams better. Um, at the end of the day, all your highlights, you can also, or, or your clips even, you can upload them to YouTube as a point of archiving so that, you know, you are still having multiple platforms, but one of them is live streaming, the other one is like an archive and people who missed out, they'll watch it on YouTube. Now, this is very important because um, Twitch tends to delete videos after a period of time, you know, to prevent clutter. Um, highlights and clips will not be deleted, but videos that are not saved will not be saved. Okay, so technically you need to uh, still push them to YouTube to make sure that they will remain online forever. Um, I'm telling you this because I made the critical error of not saving when I first started out and I lost quite a good chunk of episodes of my show and they are, they are never recoverable. Okay, so it's very unfortunate. Okay, so how to monetize your stream? There are a few ways of doing it. For Twitch, you have your bits and cheers, you have subscriptions, so basically people, you know, they will cheer in the chat window and those bits, again, uh, are currency. One bit is, uh, I think, one cent in US dollar. Um, subscribing to you will actually give you a little bit of a, a, a small percentage of the cut. Um, of course, Twitch will take a percentage and you'll take the remainder. And this is actually able to give you some kind of a passive income. Now, affiliates and partnerships are also some of the things that can help you as a, a live streamer. Because at the end of the day, you, you still want to make sure that you know, uh, you're providing content via Twitch and Twitch is happy to support you as an affiliate or partner. And whenever people watch a stream and they, they, they donate, um, you, know, you can get money out uh, to your bank account. Or in your case, um, PayPal. Or in most cases, PayPal. And of course, you can always tell people to donate directly to your PayPal or your Ko-fi or Patreon. And you know the numbers may be small at first, but if there are whales, okay, we call them whales. Whales are basically people who spend a lot of money. They, if, sometimes people do enjoy the content and they, was, they are willing to spend a lot. Um, we've heard of cases where some photographers are being supported by whales who literally part about um, hundreds of dollars per month just to support them. And, and you know, it's just literally someone watching the stream and go like, oh man, I really love your work. I want to support you. And here's 100 US dollars. Just like that, okay? Uh, just to share with you guys, um, when I did uh, a, a donation drive last month, oh, sorry, June, June, like two months ago, uh, for our Cattery, which is basically an adoption place for cats, um, we used to raise a tip stream and PayPal to bring in donations and we actually exited 1.3K US, uh, sorry, 1.3K Sing dollars. So that was a good amount uh, considering that, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a one month kind of a stretch with only about, I think, four, two times four, eight episodes of live streams. You know, it's, it's not so bad. Um, and, and it just shows that, you know, the power of, of live streaming can actually result in actions by your audience to want to donate for a cause, for example, all right? So think along the lines on how you can further monetize a stream. Um, but for me, I, I like to use only PayPal and Resultive Stream right now because it's just a lot more uh, convenient. I'm already a Twitch affiliate, but I just leave it as a, a rank, nothing more, okay? 
So Razor Tip Stream is uh, they've existed a beta program for um, on June. All right, so you can actually head over to the uh, the link which I'm going to share in the chat window. Let me just type it in. Okay, so this link will actually bring you to uh, uh, if I'm not wrong. Let me just confirm. Yes, correct. So this link will actually bring you to the Razor Tip Stream link uh, and it will explain to you how you can start uh, using this for your own monetization program for your own live streams. Uh, but bear in mind that it's absolutely free. Okay, There's no need to pay a single cent whatsoever. You don't have to buy any Razor products. Uh, they're just, they just started this uh, tip stream platform because of COVID-19. They just want to support live streamers. And of course, you know, one of the best ways uh, for live streaming is to be rewarded if you show support for your live streamers. So in my case, anytime people donate through my Razor Tip Stream, they'll accumulate this thing called Razor Silver, which they can use to buy toy, uh, games and products by Razor, like even the keyboards, mice, and headsets. So it does add value to, to the audience. And you know, these are some of the things that you can actually use as, as, again, incentives for the audience to keep on coming back and follow your work, uh, follow your live streams. And then, you know, at the end of the day, they realize that when they support you, they will actually receive rewards themselves. So this is pretty much a beneficial relationship. All right. So other tips and tricks I can suggest to you in terms of um, how to grow your, your live stream channel, um, build a community. It, it, it is a very tough world. It's very tough to, to build the numbers. Um, even for me, I started in March 2020. Uh, the number of followers I have is only about 487. But you know, the number of people on Twitch for photography is growing. Okay, it's not it's not a big number yet, but it is growing. Uh, and you can see now that there are a lot of communities popping up and there's one finally, one big massive Twitch photography community that has its own Discord channel and a lot of wonderful uh, people uh, you know, manning it, making sure that the, the, the streams are all of certain quality um, and that people are able to interact with one another and just you know share their work and then take photos and stuff like that. And, you can even see in the conversation here on the right, um, you know, sometimes people will encourage other photographers on how to be a better photographer. Um, and it's very, very interesting to see, you know, the different levels of photography that's coming in. Um, but more often than not, I can see that the senior photographers who have more experience are able to, you know, guide the younger ones and help them. And this is something that we want to achieve really, um, to, to have uh, the continued legacy of better photographers in future generations. I mean, I'm sure Photorama is the same. Um, we, we, we share knowledge and we teach people, we, we, we discuss information freely just like this because we want people to learn. And then, you know, at the end of the day, it's good for the community overall uh, and good for the industry overall. Consistency is very important as well. Uh, make sure you schedule your streams, make sure people know your schedule uh, and always come up with fresh content. Don't don't go with the same stuff every single day or every single episode of your live stream because it can get very boring. Um, do's and don'ts I can share. Uh, well, basically, never buy bots. You know, sometimes you might be tempted to buy followers or buy bots to, um, to, to, to get your, your, your stream look like there's a lot of followers. Never do that, right? It's not a good thing. Uh, never do follow for follows. If you tell people to follow me, then I'll follow you back. That's not a good thing either, all right? Or even subscribe me and I'll subscribe, subscribe you back. Yes, you earn a little bit of uh, money here and there, but it's not helpful in the long run because at the end of the day, people are there not because, just because of your content. They just want to do that for your favor. And uh, in the end, you won't get anything out of it, right? Uh, never beg for sponsorships. I know sponsorships are nice. Uh, it's always good to have people to, you know, bring you free gifts and freebies, but don't expect brands to give you free stuff all the time because uh, you might get blacklisted basically. Um, never do this. Spamming your channel stream links in another person's stream, okay? Unless people allow you to do that or they ask you for it, it's just basic courtesy. So at the end of the day, it's just basic courtesy. Don't, don't, don't do that basically, all right? Don't, don't piss people off. <laughs> okay, so this is the Twitch Photography Team Discord channel link. Uh, I'll copy and paste in the um, in the chat window as well, so you can join. Um, it's a very fun uh, community. Everyone is very friendly. Uh, I really hope you guys can join it as well. Um, and it's very interesting to see the kind of uh, photography works that are being shared as well. Okay. 
Right, so Q&A questions. Uh, if you guys got any questions, feel free to type them in the chat window and I'll, I'll try my best to answer them um, to the best of my abilities. Yep. You only like when I speak to you. Can I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, what is the most um, like embarrassing, like uh, uh, some accident that happened to you, uh, and how did you fix it? Accident. Okay. Uh, the most common accidents. <laughs> I, okay, I don't call it accidents. More like a, a glitch. Okay. Uh, most common glitch that happens is when my cameras freeze. Okay, yeah. like, like, like right now it's, it's fine, it's smooth, okay, it's playing. But let's say, for example, sometimes there's hardware conflict when I accidentally open up a software or maybe some software updates itself and there's some issues, then the camera will freeze. So what I'll do is just like, oh, look at that, it froze. <laughs> just laugh it off, keep calm, then start to test and trigger the camera, make sure everything's okay. Like, like for example, okay, uh, let me just create a scenario. Right now I'm talking to you guys, it looks fine and safe, and then suddenly, oops, uh, my picture is gone and I don't realize it. Maybe some people will tell me, hey man, your video is gone. I'll be like, oh, it's gone? Okay, let me just try to fix it. Let me see. There we go. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Something like that. So you just make a joke out of it. All right, so it looks very smooth and people go like, hey, this guy is cool. He's not like panicking, you know? The last thing you want to do is panic. Yeah. Um, the other problems that I have is audio. Sometimes this happens, okay? So imagine I'm and you don't hear audio. Mm -hmm. So, Sometimes people go like, Ness, you're muted. I'm like, oh no, I, I, I got so excited with the audience. I, I'm so excited to talk to you guys that I forgot to press the button. I'm really sorry about that. But here I am, you can hear my wonderful voice again. So just make a joke out of it. And people go like, yeah, this is cool. It's very chill. Yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, pretty much it's visuals and audio. Okay, let me see. Uh, there are some questions. Uh, sorry, it... I don't, I don't quite understand the survey. Oh, that's Marco. <laughs> Any recommendation regarding the platform for selling videos up to one hour long? Uh, yes. Videos of up to one hour long, I would recommend YouTube. YouTube is still the best. Uh, you can upload videos of up to how many hours is really up to you. Okay, so far YouTube is the best. And YouTube is quite forgiving in terms of DMCA guidelines and rulings. Um, they do not... Uh, they do not... Uh, what do you call it? They're not so strict like Twitch or Facebook because if Facebook or Twitch finds any uh, copyrighted music, they'll just mute you immediately. They don't even give you a chance. YouTube will just tell you, hey, don't do this. Uh, don't monetize it, but we will monetize it off you. And that's fine, I think. It's not so bad. Um, so YouTube is still the best platform for videos of up to one hour long, right? Mm -hmm. but, but make sure when you upload to YouTube, um, try to put it on a playlist so that it's easier for people to identify what you're playing uh, or rather what you're watching. Okay, like for example, when I run my amazing live show, I will actually upload the two hour episode, the entire two hour episode onto YouTube. But I put them in place so that people will find them easily and will not clutter the rest of my uh, video files. Okay, so hopefully that helps you, Alexander. I look forward to your videos. Thanks, thanks. It, it was fine, yeah. Most welcome. What, Thank what you. The, what's the best time for, for online lectures? Like two hours or um, more, maybe? Less? Uh, there's no right or wrong answer, to be honest. But I find that two hours is, in my opinion, uh, the most uh, efficient number of hours because uh, it's just nice. You know, there's still like, for example, when I told Marco, I, I don't mind doing this live stream uh, sharing session, but it's going to be two hours because I roughly know how long I'm going to talk for and I roughly know at the end, I'm going to put a Q&A session and then we still have a buffer time to just chill and relax if we want to. Um, it always boils down to experience because uh, I did try one hour before and I find that it was a bit too rushed. I tried three hours before and I think it's a bit too long. So two hours is generally okay, um, but you need to continuously engage the audience by you know presenting them with, with visuals. Don't just keep on talking. Don't just keep on showing one slide. Show them examples, demonstrations, and keep them on the edge. And people will just go like, oh, look, there's something new that's on screen. I want to pay attention now. Mm. So you have to keep on engaging. Um, if you have humor, if you have a sense of humor, it'll be good to just make jokes. People laugh, you know, they'll enjoy it. Uh, these kind of things happen as well. Yeah. <laughs> so so Pepe will never have his... Uh... Uh, streaming the uh, channel because he's uh, fighting and he's not uh, have humor at all. No, no, <laughs> no humor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, uh, Zoran asks, uh, is it better to make shorter but more frequent posts or longer? Uh, again, it really depends on how you want to schedule your shows. Um, some people, they like to do uh, frequent posts on, on streams, uh, maybe like one hour uh, streaming, you know, but it depends on what you're showing. So I know of some photographers who do like two hours from Monday to Friday. I'm serious, Monday to Friday, but that's because they're editing. So they're editing their actual work and they're just there online two hours a day and just interacting with the audience. So for two hours, you can talk to them and you can edit and you can still do your work and it's just, you know, doing a lot of things at the same time and he builds a community from there. Um, but uh, then again, if let's say, for example, you want to do like, like my photography talk show where you need to do research in between, then I highly suggest that, you know, you, do, you just do like maybe twice or thrice a week two hours per episode and that's fine. If you do it every day, you might risk burning out. Oh, uh, speaking of burning out, it's very important not to burn out. Okay, don't put too much expectations on yourself. Don't put too high expectations um, and then you feel disappointed all the time because one of the biggest problems with live streaming is that once you burn out, once you feel like giving up, then that's where you will, your quality will drop and maybe that's where you quit live streaming altogether. Um, have I burned out before? Yes, I have. I, I have to be very candid about this. I have to admit, yes, I have. Um, so how do I fix that? Well, that's why I started, you know, to relax and chill instead of live streaming all the time. Um, sometimes I just have a random chat show and just talk to people and just do, you know, have a variety of what I want to do. Because researching on a weekly basis, I can tell you, it's very tiring and exhausting. And sometimes when you have a lot of people, you know, they have other things to do as well. You have to keep on chasing them for emails and stuff like that. It can be very taxing. Um, so in the end, it's just a matter of uh, managing your time and managing your expectations and not burning out. And always, you know, um, relax. Yeah. Have, have a good rest before and after the live stream. Okay. Um, Alexander asks, uh, any microphone recommendation if you're moving around? For example, yoga lessons. Okay. Rode, Rode Wireless Go. Very, very good. Uh -huh. Rode Wireless, very, very good uh, for all this uh, movement. So if you are, you, you are doing yoga lessons and all that, uh, maybe uh, Rode Wireless Go will be beneficial. But again, because yoga lessons, there's a lot of physical movement or even exercises, a lot of physical movement. Yeah. You may want to consider getting a, a Blue Yeti Okay, but putting it on a boom mic stand above everything so you can still pick up the voices and all that. Uh, but uh, if you're moving around so much, then I highly recommend the Rode Wireless uh, Go. I think it's pretty okay, good. Okay, thanks. thanks. No problem. No problem. Yep. Any other questions? Very happy to share whatever I can share. I, I hope that uh, today's uh, sharing session has been beneficial and I hope that uh, you guys were able to take some notes and uh, hopefully... Uh, pick up some new skills and be on uh, be another live streamer. <laughs> uh, Mez, thank you so much for this. Uh, You're most welcome. For, for me, it's, well, it was really, uh, really, really a rare uh, workshop where you have all the useful stuff, you know. I had like a lot of workshops, but uh, they all lack with... Uh, uh, some facts and some finances so you cover everything and thank <laughs> you thank you so much for the opening of of uh, 10th university for Tarawa. it was yeah, really, really great really great thank you so much yeah most welcome thank you. um if you guys uh, look at your screen right now i'm actually sharing with you guys uh my website uh, my contact details uh, my email address so if you guys want to reach out to me feel free to do so i mean we can be connected by WhatsApp as well, uh, but don't call me unnecessarily. <laughs> um, I have a link here, socialmedia.drmezami.com. It works best on mobile devices, but it does give you access to uh, my Twitch stream. And I really hope you guys can hit me with a follow on Twitch. So I'm just going to put my link here uh, and we can keep in touch. Oh, one last favor. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay, there we go. Uh, can everyone, let, let's take a group photo. <laughs> Is it okay? So can I have everyone on uh, your webcam, just turn on your webcam so we can actually see one another and I'm just going to take a group photo and I'm going to upload it on my Facebook page because you guys are such awesome people. And this is, this is my first time giving a talk uh, to folks across uh, the other planet. Uh, not across the other planet, across the, the other side of the planet. So thank you so much for joining me this
uh, afternoon for you guys and evening for me. Right now, the, I don't know if the sun is gone already, I think. Okay, so uh, let's take a... Oh, yours is not working. No problem, no problem. Let's just, let's just pretend that you're there then. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a screenshot now. So stand by. Everybody look at your webcam. Yeah. Okay, ready on three. One, right. two, three. Okay. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. Let me just paste this because I'm actually going to put a photo. That's a wonderful thing about technology, isn't it? So there we go. We have everyone here. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, nice one. Awesome, awesome. Everyone, thank you so much for having me today. This is this has been really wonderful. Um, I'm really, really... Uh, it, it's a privilege you know, to be on uh, Photorama. X and, and you know, Marco, Marco, yeah. where are you? <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, thank you so much for having me on your show. I mean, uh, this is this is uh, an extraordinary opportunity. I'm very happy to actually make new friends, and I hope you guys will keep in touch and uh, let's let's meet someday. This is first time. This is the start. Yes. Start. Yeah. <laughs> we will be in touch. Definitely, definitely. All right. I think uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if anyone uh, out there has got any questions with regards to live streaming. Feel free to drop me an email. I try to respond as soon as I can because maybe you don't have the questions here. But uh, if you have questions later on, maybe you can just think of it later and just send me an email. No problem. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. All right. Stay safe. I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye.